Hi, my name is Ken McAlpine. Welcome to R Ventura TV. Our guest today is Pat Meyer. Pat is the founder of an organization called Friends of the Island Fox, and she's also the current president of the Channel Islands Park Foundation, two nonprofit organizations that have done, quietly done, a tremendous amount of good for our beautiful Channel Islands. If you'd like to learn more about either one of those, the websites are ciparkfoundation.org and islandfox.org. Welcome to the show, Pat. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you, Ken. Yeah. Now, tell me a little bit. You're uh, just a do-gooder at heart and an energetic person. You could have thrown yourself into any cause whatsoever, and the Channel Islands are lucky to have you. But why the Channel Islands? Well, I got introduced to the islands probably about 14 years ago, and I went out to the visitor's center when I was uh, researching for a lecture on the island fox and the ecology aspects of that, and met the park volunteers there, and met the rangers, and they were so accommodating and nice, and then they gave me all of this massive information that was fantastic. I went to the islands, and I was hooked. And what is it about the islands, and I know, you know, books and books and books have been written about mm -hmm. them, but what is it about the islands that makes them so special? I think a lot of people, e even people who live in this area, are not aware of what a gem we have offshore. That's true. They are very special, and there's lots of reasons. And one of the reasons is that they have been separated from the mainland forever, and as such, have an amazing ability to let people research about evolution. They're a bit like the Galapagos Islands. They have there 145 species found nowhere else in the world. So the people can study the biodiversity, but they also can study the amazing cultural heritage that's out on the islands. Because the Chumash, Native American Indians lived there, and then there was the great ranching years. So all of that provides wonderful opportunities. Plus, of course, they're beautiful. They're great for hiking and kayaking. It's just an amazing place. And are there any, I mean, this is probably a ridiculous question, but since there is no such thing, any special moments you remember out there where you just thought, oh my gosh, I cannot believe where I am and what I'm seeing? Probably the first time I saw an island fox in the wild, that, because I had researched them for so long. And finally, we were seeing the comeback of the species, and that was my moment. And tell us a little bit, I mean, that's actually a wonderful story. The Friends of the Island Fox, which you founded, serves to raise funds for the Park Service effort to restore the Island Fox. Mm -hmm. now it's, it's a somewhat long story, but it, uh, can you tell us the short version of this remarkable recovery? Because it is remarkable. It is remarkable because we were down on two of the islands to only 15 foxes on each of those islands. So without the work of the Park Service and the Channel Islands National Park, we wouldn't have those species. But they suffered such a decline due to our use of an insecticide in the environment. That caused the bald eagles not to be able to breed because their eggs smashed due to the insecticide in their systems. Mm -hmm. And they became extinct on the islands, the bald eagles. Now, bald eagles eat fish. They also are territorial. And when they were gone, in came a golden eagle that recognized that the island fox was a perfect target for predation. Started eating the island fox, and the populations just plummeted in six years. On Santa Rosa, they went down from over 1,700 to only 15 foxes. So now we're raising funds to um, support the recovery efforts. And I should point out also that Friends of the Island Fox is now a program of the Channel Islands Park Foundation. We work together. Thank you. And uh, so we joined um, the end of 2010. So work together now to save not just the island fox, all of the species. And just to reiterate, though, I mean, because the islands are so unique, the island fox is not found anywhere else in the world, right? That's absolutely right. It's on six of the eight California Channel Islands and on three of the Northern Islands, which are the Channel Islands National Park. And for our viewers who have yet to see an island fox, but now can't wait to see one, how would you describe <laughs> them? Well, they're about the size of a house cat. They only weigh about five pounds. They are exceedingly cute, of course. Um, a tiny little nose. 
a little button on the end and little ears and they're just very cute and very short legs so they're if you're looking into the vegetation they may be hard to see but when you do it's very worthwhile because they're not afraid of humans and there's certain places certain islands where they're fairly easy to see, right, Pat? Like, I mean, Santa Cruz, the campground Santa there. Cruz. I mean, if somebody wanted to see an island fox, and it really is a rare opportunity, mm -hmm. where would be a good place? The and, odds, where yeah. would the odds be good? Probably Santa Cruz, Scorpion. Go okay. to Scorpion Landing and walk up into the campground area. And if you're going to see them, that's where you'll see them. Okay. And Friends of the Island Fox, can you tell our viewers a little bit about exactly how they worked with the Park Service? I mean, you raise money for radio collars, correct? And yes, we raise money for all of the recovery efforts. That's the monitoring now that's going on, the radio collars, the vaccination program, um, giving them health checks every year. Mm -hmm. And now we're this year and next year and a few years from now probably going to be concentrating on the microchips that they wear because the microchips give the fox identification for its lifetime, which is very special. Wow. So the technology is pretty astonishing. It is. Yeah. It's and amazing. probably so is the expense. <laughs> yes. Right. right. <laughs> Takes a lot of uh, fundraising. Right. And now the Channel Islands Park Foundation, tell me a little bit about that. I know they're part of their, you know, they're also a fundraising arm for Channel Islands National Park. Yes. And maybe you can also briefly explain to your viewers which islands comprise Channel Islands National Park, because I think that's sort of confusing. Yes. But, um, besides raising money, the foundation also reaches out to the community. Mm -hmm. So actually that's probably a long question, but if you could just tell us what comprises the park and then what the foundation does other than raise money. Okay, there's the three larger islands of Santa Rosa, Santa Cruz, and San Miguel. And then there's two small islands, Santa Barbara and Anacapa. Now they're all the Channel Islands National Park and you can go to all of those. And the Channel Island Park Foundation is reaching out to the community to let them know about this wonderful resource just off our shore and also to encourage people to support the work of the park, Channel Islands Park Foundation because we are trying to raise funds for the things that the park needs to restore the islands to their original wild state and also to preserve all of the biodiversity and the cultural heritage and to just make sure that those islands stay wild and beautiful as they are. And that's not an easy task because mm -mm. once invasive species move in they're mm -hmm. hard to eradicate and uh, like the wild pigs on Santa mm -hmm. Cruz that was a big effort with kiwi pig hunters and <laughs> many legends yeah. but uh, all that sort of thing it's, it's going on on the islands. I think a lot of people aren't aware of the fact that those efforts are going on and that they're costly and that there's a way to help if you wish. There is. Yeah. They, people can support the work of the Channel Islands Park Foundation and the money would go directly to funding some of the efforts of the park to restore the islands. As you say, it's extremely expensive and just the maintenance of the islands is expensive right. too because the park service is maintaining the trails and ensuring the safety of all of the visitors. And to know them is to love them. You also offer programs that either where people will come into the schools and talk, mm -hmm. correct? You offer trips to the islands. Can you tell yeah. our viewers a little bit about what sort of opportunities they might have as a result of the foundation or how they could see the islands? Yes, they can take trips with us. They can go to, say, things like science festivals and how, there's an education table manned by the foundation that gives out information and education. We um, we do teaching, we educate as much as possible, particularly about the fox, which is free to the schools. Um, we are every year support the beach cleanup. Um, we have live uh, speakers, and we have a speaker like the whale expert, Petra Dima, who is a member of the International Whaling Commission, who uh, speaks on her subjects that people are invited to. There's many, many things, and they're all obviously on the websites. So this is an opportunity to see, like in the case of Petra Diemer, who's a world-renowned marine conservationist. And yes. You're able to bring people like that mm -hmm. to little old Ventura. Well, it's, the park is yeah. a huge draw. It is a huge draw because these people 
are often naturalists and they want to research and with Petra it's the whales Right. So, uh, yes, you're right. We right. do attract Well, people. I think I remember Jacques Cousteau said that it was one of his favorite spots to dive. I mean, I mm -hmm. think people don't realize, and these are people, Petra, for instance, who's been all around the globe. Right. And Jacques Cousteau, who we obviously mm -hmm. followed all around the globe for so many <laughs> years. And, you know, the fact that we have this kind of gem right there is astonishing. It is, yeah. and it's well worth a visit. I would encourage all the viewers to take a trip out there if they can. Now, how would they go about doing that, Pat? I mean, they would go out of either uh, Ventura with Island Packers or out of Santa Barbara Harbor. Okay. And again, um, the Channel Islands uh, National Park website will give them direction on that too. But yes, they can go over there. They can go over for a day. They can go over and camp. In fact, some of the trips are just half day. so. There's all opportunities. And do you get a chance to get out there very often? Or are you probably so busy Not doing often. all the legwork? <laughs> yeah. Not as often as I would like, but when I go, it's very okay. special. Usually I'm taking a trip of people, which in itself is very rewarding. It must be fun to see their reaction. Mm. Yeah. And is there, do you have a, I hate, uh, this question is a tough one because they're all pretty nice, but do you have a favorite that you could, favorite island among the islands? Probably Santa Cruz, um, probably because I know it the best. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know the others as well as that, but uh, hope to one of these days. Yeah. Well, for some of the islands, it's a bit of a boat trip, but mm -hmm. it's definitely worth it. And you can also fly out, right? I think, doesn't Channel Islands Aviation offer trips out to the islands yes. too? So if you're mm -hmm. not much for a boat ride, there's mm -hmm. that opportunity too. Do they, they fly out of Camarillo Airport, right? Yes, I believe they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. Okay. And do you have any uh, future plans that you're excited about with the foundation or long-term goals? Let me ask you, the long-term goals for either Friends of the Island Fox, I know they're sort of melded together now, but mm -hmm. what, what would be your long-term goals? The long-term goals would be to really fund something significant for the park that they need. Every year we work on a set of goals that the park has given us. But if we could achieve something really fantastic for the park, that would be just a wonderful, wonderful thing for me. And then, of course, to see the full recovery of the Island Fox. And that's well on its way, though, it right? It is. Yeah. It is. So. And at some point, they may come off the endangered species list. The park will consider when to petition U.S. Fish and Wildlife to take them off the endangered species list. But you have to have everything in place, apparently, to be able to do that. But it's That's going to be a grand moment, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Tim Kud and the, the fox biologist will just be uh, ecstatic. And a lot of the recovery is due to his work. Now, we're nearly out of time, Pat. And um, thanks. It's, I knew this would be a fascinating interview. But <laughs> is there anything you'd like to add that you think the viewers should know about the Channel Islands, about the organization? I would just encourage them to support the organizations, to go on the uh, websites, probably join the Facebook, like us on Facebook, and learn, learn about the islands, because I think the majority of people in these areas probably don't know what they should do about the islands. There's so much to know. And also, it's absolutely fantastic for children. When you see the children in the schools, when I educate, and their eyes go wild when you tell them about things they may see, it, that is really, really special. So I encourage the viewers to help, to get educated, to visit the islands, and also go to the um, Channel Islands uh, Visitor Center in Ventura Harbor, because there the children can see that um, tank with the, uh, the touch, marine, tank. The touch yeah. tank, yes and can see the great new film about the islands. So, yeah, and, and support us, support our work, because it is so very vital. Well, thanks, Pat. You've been a terrific guest, and we so appreciate your coming. Thank you. Um, that's it for today. We really appreciate your watching. Our special thanks to Pat Meyer and the Channel Islands Foundation. Thank you.